This is Musical Talk. Musical Talk. The UK's independent musical theatre podcast. Musical Musical Talk. Talk. The UK independent musical theatre podcast. Hello and welcome to Musical Talk. My name is Nick Hudson. We have a lovely, lovely little episode for you today. Our lovely and very dear friend Gina Beck sat down with our lovely and very good friend David Herzog to discuss the classic musical Showboat that is playing at the New London Theatre until about mid-August. Do go and see the show. We really urge you to see this classic musical. Um, It's regarded as, we know, as one of the earliest examples of the book musical. So if you're interested in the development of musical theatre as an art form, go and see the show to see how everything went from there. I'm going to hand you over to the interview now, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. All right, folks, we are coming to you live from the New London Theatre, which is currently the home of Showboat, the musical, and we are welcoming back the wonderful Miss Gina Beck. How are you doing today, Gina? I'm doing good, thank you. It's quite sunny. It's a little bit spring. It's coming into summer. I'm feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad day to be hanging out, is it? Yeah. So we had you on the show a little bit recently. You were doing I Love You, You're Perfect Now Change. Yeah, you were good. Is that, is that about how long ago July. it was? I was trying it was to June, think. July, yeah. End of June, early July. And didn't you enjoy that piece? We Loved certainly it. enjoyed having you on the program. And we, uh, those of us at Musical Talk who went to see the show had an absolutely wonderful time. <laughs> Did you enjoy, you enjoy doing it? <laughs> we loved doing it. It sort of became a sort of a hit. Especially, well, it was, it was really a small time hit because basically there weren't very many seats and we only did two and a half weeks. So we sold out and people were trying to get to it. It, was felt, <laughs> it just yeah. was really funny as if we were, you know, a massive sellout show. But it was just basically down to the fact that we... <laughs> 60 seats. No, yeah, it was absolutely perfect for that piece. It was a lovely venue. It was wonderfully, wonderfully performed. And so now you're hanging out here with Showboat, yeah. right? So tell us how you came to be involved with the piece. That was, uh, it was actually when I was doing I Love You, You're Perfect Now Change. I had okay. my final for this on a Friday. And then I met, and then I did a show, of I Love You, You're Perfect, in the evening. And I was telling them all that I'd been offered Showboat. And uh, the rest of the cast were really excited mm-hmm. because everyone wants to work at Sheffield with yeah. Daniel Evans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I right, felt right. like amazed that they just offered me the job straight away. And um, it was such a great audition process. Daniel's so welcoming and lovely, and you know, enthusiastic and encouraging. And you don't feel, you know, on the spot. Mm-hmm. You feel very relaxed. And yeah, it was just. It seemed like the music fitted my voice. Yeah. And it was really lucky that you know I was free at that time. How did the show go down in the shuffle, and how were the audiences? Uh, absolutely brilliantly. We had a, such a good time. I mean, when we were in rehearsals, we sort of, you know, you have that feeling. Um, this is this is really good. Mm-hmm. We could, yeah, this is going to be quite good. Yeah, yeah. And and then we did a few previews, and we had a bit of trouble with our set. Um, the, we had this big boat, and the automation is quite right. complex. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think that sort of stopped us having maybe the reactions that we thought we were going to get in the preview we only had four previews okay. and I think we were potentially a bit like, oh maybe we're not we're not going to be a hit. and then we had the press night and it was amazing it was everything that we wanted the audience was fantastic and you know they, we had such a great reaction then we started getting all these reviews yeah. these five star reviews and it was just mind blowing and then that's when we started everyone started talking about the West End. Oh, great. So that happened pretty quickly then. The yeah, it, for that. I think it would had already been an idea. David Ian was already in the sort of vague kind of area of sure, this. Sure. And, you know, I think it was just a case of if you get good reviews and the th- we get the theatre, then it can happen. So mm-hmm. once we got those reviews, obviously everyone started to really hope and talk about it. And, mm-hmm. um, obviously, without giving anything away, Daniel, I think towards the end of the run, maybe like a week before we finished, came and talked to us and said, it's g- quite likely. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's not yeah. 100%, but I think it's, you know, it's getting there. That's so great, yeah. We, went, we all went our merry way and sort of waited for our agents to call us. Of course, yeah, It was yeah. obviously very exciting when they did. Okay, and, so, and so you're here now. And so how long ago was press night for you guys? That was last Monday. Lovely. How did it go? Uh, great. Yeah, yeah, really great. Massive audience. And again, we've spent the whole week having these amazing reviews flooding in okay. for mainly five stars mm-hmm. all just saying come and see us so hopefully mm-hmm. that'll get the audiences to come and, to come and see Showboat because I may, maybe it's not an obvious choice when you're looking at the kind of lists of West End shows potentially and it, it's it's a very American piece and that's yeah. what we might talk about here in a little yeah. bit yeah. in the meantime how, how have the audiences been taken to it here in London yeah I mean yes they've they seem to love it. Good reactions. Yeah, great reactions. They, at the end of the show, everyone's on their feet. And, 
good. I think they feel like, it feels to me at the end that they feel like they've gone on a journey with us mm. because obviously this musical spans 40 years. They've seen, they've seen something happen mm -hmm. more than just sitting back and watching, you know, uh, entertaining musical. I feel that they've sort of come through some sort of emotional well, <laughs> struggles. No, that's exactly yeah. right. I mean, that's the depth and the drama in this piece mm. is part of its history. Mm -hmm. It was really the first of its kind when it first yeah. came out. Yeah. It was such a heavy piece and yeah. Broadway audiences certainly were well, we're not ready for something <laughs> no. like this. And it still hits very strongly even today in that yeah. sense, doesn't it? Definitely. I think unless you've seen Showboat the films or, you know, seen it before, I think the title of the show makes you think that it's a different kind of show to what you yeah. get. <laughs> because there is a lot of really, you know, serious the stuff about the racial the integration problems and the mm -hmm. racial prejudices and, and heartbreak and, you know, people leaving other people, you know, leaving them destitute, yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. It's yeah. just a lot of sad stories mixed with some really joyous moments as well. So it's <laughs> like a, it's an up and downy, roller coaster -y type show. It is. Well, uh, from your perspective as a performer, what, tell us what the show is, t tell us what the show is about. Well, uh, it's about this showboat that um, they used to run up and down the Mississippi. Uh, I'm not sure if they still do. Maybe there are any left. I don't Could know. Be. Could be. be, yeah. Um, yeah, it was big business. They would take the show and literally have the theatre inside the boat and dock at different towns up and down the river and people would pay their money and come aboard and watch the shows. And I think it, in those days when it was there was no other entertainment, it was a massive deal, these boats coming to town and everyone hopefully we capture that in the opening scenes when our boat arrives all the people on the dock are just like thrilled with their yeah. lot that the boat is here and they've obviously been waiting it I don't know how long it how often it you know, obviously different boats came up and down but anyway so um it's all about the family on the boat mm -hmm. and the different characters that are on this boat and then eventually in the second act they leave Quite some of the characters leave the boat, mm -hmm. and it's sort of what happens to them when they leave the confines and the sort of v relatively safe confines of this kind of boat where sort of any anything goes. Mm -hmm. There's black black and white people working together. There's no no racism on the boat. There's you know it's very a safe environment for people just to be humans. Whereas I think outside in that, at that time things were a lot different. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's an excellent point and well made and you know things do take a really different and dramatic turn uh, between the first and the second act, don't mm. they? Now tell us about your character and, and how, yes. uh, how she travels. Uh, I play lovely young Magnolia Hawks, who's the daughter of the, the two, <laughs> the couple who own the boat, Captain Andy and mm -hmm. his slightly <laughs> domineering wife, <laughs> Parthenia Hawks. Um, and uh, yeah, the show I've been living on the boat. I think since I was nine, it sort of says in the book. Um, mm. And I've grown up in this amazing, fun environment. Desperately wanted to join in the acting, but my mother won't let me. Um, seeing it all from the sidelines, became become massively best friends with the leading lady of the boat, Julie Laverne, and it's like a really happy time for me. And then suddenly I meet this man who's just strolling past the boat on his way somewhere, and. And that sort of seals my fate for life. He comes aboard board the boat and starts acting in the show, and, and we fall in love and, and get married. Um, and basically, he's the one who takes me away from the boat, and potentially <laughs> things don't go. It doesn't go into a happy ever after. It's sort of like that. The story for Magnolia. It starts in a really lovely place, and then very quickly, Julie, my dearest friend on the boat has to leave the boat um, so it's very quickly catapults into heartache which mm -hmm. she's not my character's not experienced before so it's very yeah it's good so what are some of the numbers that you get to take part because there's a lot of famous songs yes. in the show so which ones do you get to be a part um, of I get to be in Can't Help Loving That Man great which is <laughs> first performed in the kitchen of the boat yeah with the the cook Queenie played by Sandra Marvin amazingly you know brilliant character um, and Julie, uh, we it's basically just a party in the kitchen. <laughs> it's one of those real massively uplifting numbers. It's so fun to sing, and, and then I get to sing it again in the second act mm -hmm. when I'm auditioning to be a singer at a nightclub, and it's a whole different kind of song for me. That by that point, it has more the words have so much more resonance in it, right. and it's very yeah, it's it's really interesting to sing 
to have that song t- twice in the show. So it's such so different, it's a polar opposite kind of vibe. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting how you could just tweak the book a little bit yeah. and the song completely changes yeah. context. Yeah. Um, and I get to sing After the Ball, which is not actually written for Showboat. It was an old musical number, very famous song um, from the 1920s. What, what's really funny, and I sing it at, at, at the nightclub at the end. What's funny is that when we have older people in the audience, they always sing along and oh, they really? immediately start like <laughs> swaying and like talking to their whoever they've come with and going, Oh, yes, I know this one. Is, it good or is, is that good or is that It's brilliant. Swiping? No, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's perfect. We need more of it. So if you're coming <laughs> and you want to sing, yeah, yep. sing <laughs> just <on>. carry out. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, there's obviously amazing songs like Old Man River, which unfortunately I don't get to be part of. Mm. Though I think we do sing a sort of reprise of it at some point. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's amazing. What a powerful number that is what's your favourite of the songs to sing um, well there's two amazing duets love duets they get to sing with Chris Pelusa plays Gaylord Ravenel um, Make a Believe name, name yeah, love. such a good character <laughs> um, Make Believe is a lovely charming playful duet and then I think the really fun one to sing is You Are Love one of the most romantic duets I think ever written which I had not even heard before <laughs> which is weird being a soprano you think of would have uh, known that there was this amazing soprano song I could have sung. Right, right. Um, there's a lot of hidden gems yes, in this. Yes, yeah. We um, I was just soaring, beautiful. I, I get to use a lot of my classical tones. It's really, yeah, fun to sing. Yeah, because you, you have a classical training in opera, I do, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I learnt with an opera singer who lived in my village. Oh, yeah? When I was growing up, uh, she trained me for about ten years. In fact, she sent me some flowers on my press night. Aww. So sweet. Yeah, she's going to come That's up. Great. So how familiar with, were you with this piece then before not, you auditioned? N- not at all. I didn't, okay. I didn't know the story. Never seen it. Never seen the films. Never seen mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't really even know it after I'd accepted the job until I got the script. Mm-hmm. Probably two weeks before the rehearsal started. That's fair enough. That happens to us as performers a bit. Some, some you know, some you don't. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, and I read it and I thought, well, this is more interesting than I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Um this 40 years like span it's just what yeah. a what a gift of a part to be able to play so many different ages throughout it's not often you get that kind of mm-hmm. especially in musical theatre and there's a lot of dense scene work which without any songs and there's scenes in the second half where we don't sing at all and it sort of feels like you're in some sort of Chekhov play <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely right which I yeah. enjoy <laughs> excellent so we talked about how sort of how very American this piece is. Not only is it a very American piece, it's also a historical American piece. Now, now I've always said that British performers are much better at doing things like American accents, much better than the other way around. <laughs> and I, I got to see that firsthand with you when I saw "I Love You, You're Perfect Now" change because you had several American accents, <laughs> yes. in that, and each one of them was exquisite. Thanks. <laughs> I hope you think the same about this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, I mean, obviously, the accent is just a very sort of. Uh, What's the word? It's a very superficial uh, part of uh, doing an American piece. How have you adapted to this American story, this historically American piece? Um, well, we did a lot of we sort of did a lot of research about it mm. with with Daniel in the beginning. Um, it is hard for us being Brits to <laughs> sort of understand the significance of the time period and what the country was coming out of at the time in 1887 mm-hmm. when it first begins and. And, you know, we, we start the show with a big image of the Confederate flag, which mm. is sort of, you know, in the press even today about of course, whether, yeah. whether it should be used and whether when it should be banned. And, mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, we took, we put up big maps and, you know, showed the journey. And it's, so, it's sure. hard for us as British people, it's such a small country, to understand the enormity of the journey up the Mississippi. You know, it just takes days and days to get... Right. from town to town and mm-hmm. they were all living on this boat the whole time mm-hmm. but do you think do you think that that's something that sort of comes across in popular culture because that, I think that is why American and British performers are able to sort of weave in and out of culture so easily yeah. is because we share each other's cultures exactly ultimately. and I think you're right uh, we get a lot more American having worked in America myself mm. I know that it's not quite the same as in there's not a lot of British saturation, uh, saturation of British television yeah, on American channels, yeah. whereas we right. over here have you know a whole vast range of different American programs yeah. on every channel. So uh, no, that's exactly right. I totally yeah, agree. Maybe yeah. that does make it easier for us to kind of tap into your world. <laughs> and how do British audiences take to it? I mean, again, because is it because the culture crossover is so 
so easy between yes, the two countries because are they picking up people on have been grown up have grown up watching you know the old American musicals and mm-hmm. all, all everything you know the Fred Astaire and the Ginger Rogers type musicals and that you know we've we've had all that our whole mm-hmm. lives and, and I think you know it's just a just another MGM musical type kind, yeah, of, yeah. kind of format and, and Daniel mm-hmm. has directed it very filmic and yeah. uh, I think people feel comfortable with, with this um, this show it doesn't I think they adapt to it quite well even yeah. though it's set in a place that maybe they've not been <laughs> sure and what do you think it is overall about this piece that's so enduring I mean, and endearing it's crazy isn't it it's, it's almost 90 years old this show it'd be I don't think you know that watching it mm. the, um, I don't think anyone writes the, the music and the lyrics like the way you know Hammerstein and Kern did, did, did this piece I mean obviously there was a massive passion project at the time because no one else had done anything like that and, right. and they probably took a massive gamble on presenting it to the world <laughs> of Broadway who potentially weren't ready for it um, but they obviously felt very strongly about it and they they put everything into it and writing these songs that have lasted for 90 years and they're mm-hmm. still been covered by so many people Old Man oh, River yeah. how many people have sung that <laughs> just on every single you know jazz compromational you know um, musical theatre compilation type mm-hmm. CD um, but essentially they're it, it's a story of love and people having problems with love and, and different types of love. So there's so many, there's five, five different, I think four or five different couples in the show mm-hmm. and you see them at different times of their romances and, and different struggles that they have and, you know, it's the universal themes that everyone can identify with those love stories. But then at the heart of it, there's this, whole story about race and mm-hmm. and Julie Laverne's story you know that she's potentially an outcast is, and it ends to, up to the you know ruin of her life is something that still happens today for many people in many cultures mm-hmm. I think that's what makes it interesting and once the piece is uh, once, once you're finished with the piece however long that may be yes we hope it's not forever. No. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, what will be the memory that you take from it? What it, What will be its uh, its legacy in your mind? I don't, I don't, it's just It's just been the most amazing job for me already. Sheffield was just such a gift, and getting to work with Daniel, and then the fact that we then transferred to London and then had this success and all these great reviews. I just love performing this show, and I get excited about coming back to work. It's just I feel like. In my mind, it'll just be like it was the perfect fit for me, mm-hmm. and I, I feel so lucky that it just all all the stars aligned, and I mm-hmm. I got to do it, and I got to be in it, and, it, and they they liked it. <laughs> That's <laughs> brilliant. No, because we had, a few years ago we had uh, the actor Nicholas Parsons on our program, yeah. and he had said that you know when he had started out in the business, he had like a list of ideal parts in his mm-hmm. head that he wanted to play someday. And he said, I've ha- gotten to do very few of those. He's like, it's the ones that sort of crop up out of nowhere yeah. that end up becoming a nice surprise. Yeah. They end up becoming my That's favorite so parts. That's so true. Because I have parts that I've not played that I want to that I probably never will. And yet, here's one that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> it's probably my, defined my career <laughs> so far. Yeah. What are some of the other parts you'd like to play? If you um, could? <laughs> Maria and West Side Story. But closest I got was being offered the understudy once on a tour Not bad. Didn't, didn't, do, didn't do that <laughs> oh, okay. then I got phantom so that was good <laughs> uh, my fair lady I'd like to do that potentially that's that could still happen <laughs> um, Absolutely. yeah I'm not sure what else <laughs> Mary Poppins oh yeah I'd like to do that listen up producers listen up <laughs> I've done Maria on trap but only for a few performances I did eight shows of it in Kuala Lumpur so oh, really? maybe I could like to revisit that mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a great role I don't know I'm going to get I'm just going to get Daniel Evans to um, put on a lot of old musicals that I can be in <laughs> 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 that's great yeah. yes my new plan what can we resurrect next Daniel our thanks go to Gina Beck and David Herzog there for more information about Showboat and I really do urge you to go and see it visit showboatthemusical.co.uk UK to go and see Gina and a cast of other very, very talented people in action there. 
Just to note that it uh, will close on August the 27th, but that still gives you plenty of time. My name's been Nick Hudson, and I hope you enjoyed this episode, and join us again next week for a, another one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.